Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero, where thanks to social media, we've got another little crisis on our hands. What's the one message I've preached the loudest since joining this club? You never, ever, ever sell. Ludwig Dreyer, this guy's our talisman since coming through the first youth intake. We've built our team around him. You never, ever consider selling. Ludwig Dreyer, except transfer deadline day came, the bids reined in, and social media got to work. There were supporters. In Drea, we trust, was trending. But then there were the doubters. His recent form hasn't even been that good. Why would anybody else want to sign him? And then social media started raining in messages faster than I could read them. There were supporters recognising all the good that he'd done. There were doubters looking at pound notes and how much we might get for him. People telling the world not to get attached to him is not even that good. Supporters like Britt Johansson saying, look at everything extra that he brings to the club. Erla Darlin was on message, Drea must stay. Ludwig Falk, superb. We should not even contemplate selling Drea. The message was clear. We should not even contemplate selling Ludwig Drea. So I turned down all the bids. Then another one came in from Premier Division Sarpsborg. And the decision was taken out of my hands because the board decided to sell him from under me. No option even to protest the transfer. All I could have done was to resign and to rub it all in. Social media started talking about trusting the club. They know what they are doing. Fortunately, straight after his sale, I had a game and a pre-match press conference where I was asked about whether rumours that the chairman had sold him without consulting me were true and how I felt about it. Obviously, I stayed calm and I responded by saying, well, I have a rocky relationship with the chairman and he has indeed sold him without consulting me. So now we have to get used to life without Ludwig Dreyer. He's gone. We've got to try and rebuild our team and rebuild our promotion push without a Dreyer in the squad. So let's show you what life is like without Ludwig Dreyer then. In the last episode, we beat Ralph Hoss 2-1 and it looks like we went on a really good run of form after that. That is not strictly true, to be honest. In the next game, we played Nardo, a team right down near the foot of the table. They were ahead after 10 minutes. We had to come scrambling back with two goals from Jonas Hartvigson. In the next game, we played Sola just outside the relegation zone. This time we left it even later. It was nil-nil at half time. They grabbed the lead just after the break. And then we need Hartvigson in the 88th minute and Grunville in the 94th to grab us the points. Then we pick up a draw against Foller. Gersa getting the goal. Foller are good teams. So that wasn't the worst point in the world. And then we had two pretty solid performances. We had Hartvigson and Loveland getting us the goals to beat Drops' second team 2-0. And then our best performance of the season, I would say, we played Lavanga, who are also a fully professional team. We wrapped up an XG of almost three. They only had two shots on target the entire game. And we looked pretty good. You can tell by the ratings of our strikers that they were the ones that were missing all of the chances. And so it continued in our next game. This was a crucial match. We were playing Schurdels Blink who are second. This could almost have guaranteed us promotion. We absolutely dominated, but we were 3-0 down at half-time and they'd only had three shots and our strikers were missing chances. Don't let Hartfixen's seven rating fool you. He was the man that was the most culpable. If we have a look at the match stats, you'll see we had eight clear-cut chances. We hit the woodwork four times and this was not 25 yarders striking the crossbar we're talking about here. We're talking about players with an open goal six yards out, just rolling it against the post. Not only should we not have lost this game 5-2, we should have won this game probably fairly comfortably. Their XG is pumped up by the fact that they had a penalty after our mate Asali Hansen gave away his 93rd penalty in a Trump style and shirt. And so I suppose after that result, a 1-1 draw with Grorud, who are third in the table, 
steadies the ship a little bit, but considering they scored, what, seven minutes from time, and we had a late winner disallowed, and... Well, we hit the woodwork another two times as well. That's six times in the last two games. It means that going into today's game against start second team, well, we hit a little bit of a blip. Let's show you what the table's looking like. We're three points clear, which is good. But we've got Schurdels, Blink and Grorud both breathing down our necks. The only good news is, well, they've already played their 22nd game. We've got ours against start this afternoon as a game in hand. Lose it, and we're still three points clear with some decent goal difference. Win it, we're six clear with four to go, and we're looking good. But the squad is ravaged by injuries and suspensions. We're going to be without Christofferson this afternoon. We're going to be without Gerser this afternoon. The deputy right winger Schernison is unavailable. Centre-half Edoy Hansen is unavailable. This team is pretty patched together. We're bringing in Pedersen, who doesn't get a lot of game time right now. He's only played two starts all season. We're going to see how he gets on. We're having to move Loveland, 32 years old now, Loveland, as the only person we've really got as an option over on the right, which means in the centre... We're having to bring in Ina Ness. Three sub appearances all season. He's got a strength of five and a bravery of four in a two-man midfield. May as well be playing with ten men. We've got our first choice strikers up front. And Harfigson training well, playing pretty well as well. Eight goals in 11 starts, but has missed an awful lot more chances than that. And then we've got a strike partner. Now brace yourselves, because we've all got high hopes for Empa, and he is training very, very well. But he cannot score any goals. 18 appearances, 10 starts, he's got one goal, and that's one that a defender kicked into his chest, and it bounced into the goal. But look at the training. He's up to three stars now, so he's our leading striker. He's gone up more than 25 attribute points already. And we're not at the end of the season. I think he could be rounding out with a 30-point attribute bump. But he's up front and meant to be scoring goals or at least creating them. And he's not done an awful lot of that. His mate who came through the youth intake with him, Pedersen, is also training pretty well. Again, he's still developing. Let's put him in the raw category because he makes a fair few errors but again, he's gone up a good 20 attribute points already this season. So the pair of them have trained very, very well. How they're going to do this afternoon against a pretty decent team in start two? Well, we're going to have to get into the match and find out. And away we go then. So we're in our usual blue shirts. We're away to start second team. We need a result here. Three points could be. Wow, crucial. Six points clear with four games to go. That's dream territory. Three points clear with four games to go and not having a win in the last three games. Well, that is a little bit trickier. Jensen fires in an early shot. Six minutes in. Decent start. But my goodness, the boys are twitchy. Tiredness is setting in. The inconsistency of the young players is settling in. But Empa over on the free kicks because Gers is out the team today. Well, he's just tickled one in and Loveland has raked that one into the corner of the net. And we will take that for a start. It's a set-piece goal, but well, we'll take any little freebies that start wants to hand out. And I tell you what, after 20-odd minutes, that's not a terrible beginning to the game, is it? So look at the table if we can keep it like that. Six points clear, four to go. We could be here for a promotion party. Remember, two seasons ago when we got promoted, we blew the chance of winning the title. And one of the second teams actually won the title. And we only went up because second teams can't play any higher than the Norwegian third tier. We've not seen our boys on the podium yet. We've not lifted a trophy yet. We'd love to do it this season. 
as Hart Fixon does what he has done repeatedly for the last couple of games. Gone through one-on-one -on -one and hit the post. Goodness me, he is just attracted to the woodwork like a moth to a flame at the moment. And despite having an XG of 1.7... We're taking a one-goal lead into half-time. All right, I can sense that we need to give the boys a little G up. I can sense that we might concede a goal in the second half. I think we're going to check the fitness. We're going to have a chat with the boys. We're going to see you for an incredibly vital second 45 minutes. And we are back underway. We had a little look on the bench for half-time. There's not an awful lot on there, if I'm honest. It's going to be the players that are out there now that I'm thinking we are relying on. And I think we need to get a little shout out of demand more. Because we've not done an awful lot at the start of this second half, have we? In fact, we've rumbled all the way through to the 20-minute mark. And we have not had a highlight. And we've got players playing pretty poorly, including Pedersen, whose fitness is not the best. So I think we're going to bring Anderson on up front, who remains our top scorer, even though... He's on a long, barren streak without a goal. We're going to bring Hartfixen over onto this left-hand side. And we're going to ask him to be an inverted winger out there. And see if he can make some darting runs into the middle. Do we need to make another change? We've probably got more tired legs out there, haven't we? Loveland, Ness, I think we'll try and get to the 80-minute mark. Because the subs are going to weaken the team if we bring them on. Maybe we'll bring Grunvall on for the last 10. In fact, I think that is a change that we're going to make now. So we're going to bring Grunvall on for Tiny Empa. Another game without a goal. I suppose we're giving him an assist this time. And we're going to swap out Ness, I think. For... Hmm, what have we got that we can do out there? Maybe... Maybe we could swap out Ness for this young Lemming and bring Loveland inside. All right, Lemming has at least got some pace, even though he falls off the edge of cliffs repeatedly. And we have to go and scrape him back up again. I also think in a highlightless second half, we should maybe drop the tempo and get the time wasting on. Maybe just drop the width a little bit and see if we can see this out for a 1-0 win. Now we've got the highlights. It's probably not good news. We've given the ball away. It's Loveland who we've moved inside and they've got men forward. Don't give away the pen. Oh, okay. Oh, he's tackled him and then not chased the ball that he just won. And they've crossed it in and they've scored. And ah, oh, this is the story of our recent performances. Now we're going to have to change the instructions back up again. Ah, oh, this is disappointing. Loveland gives the ball away. He got back and made the tackle and then didn't chase after the ball. It just won. It's there. Well, he decides to take a couple of paces backwards. Oh, and then somebody has lost Sfella in the box and he's nodded home. And we are looking like we are drawing another game. We got one last chance. Oh, Sunder. No. Oh, okay. We're back in to the tactics. We're going full on Allardyce. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, we've clicked all of the buttons. All of them. Every single one. Because this feels like we might have just stolen one. Simmons Sunder up at the near post. He's nodded what could be a vital little winner if we hold on. And we have. All right, well, looking at the XG, we dominated it again. God, if Hartvigson had tucked away that chance where he smacks the post, that could have been a far more comfortable afternoon. We've dug another result out. Do you know what? I think the thing that keeps saving us is the personality of these players. All these youth players that we're keeping on are professional, resolute, determined. I don't half think it makes them good at coming back in games and not throwing in the towel. So let's actually give them a little bit of praise for that one. That was a good win for us. And we've now got 12 points left to play for. And we are six points clear with a reasonable goal difference as well. I think we're going to come back in a couple of games time 
and see if we can get the job done in Sub-Zero Hero.